the Smurfs, a French translation, Schrumpf. Hundreds of Smurfs live in a forest called the Land of the Lost. In 1958, when they first appeared, their world was called Les Pauvres Médot, French for the Cursed Land. To reach this cursed land required magic or traveling through dense forests, deep marshes, a scorching desert, and a high mountain range. They used storks to travel long distances. And the Smurfs village is made up of mushroom-like houses that are situated in a clearing in the middle of a deep forest with grass, a river, and lots of vegetation. And there's only one evil human that lives nearby, a wizard named Gargamel. So traditionally, in ancient times, this mushroom-like vi village, the depiction behind it is the, agar the fly agaric mushroom. Okay, so this mushroom was broken up and sprinkled into sauces of milk containing ibotenic acid, which would attract and kill flies. Um, hence why it's called the fly agaric as well, or, you know, the magic mushroom. It has lots of different names, but it grows in the northern hemisphere regions, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's most sought after um, by the locals of Siberia, okay? So the Siberian shamans could be seen preparing the magic mushrooms professionally, okay? So it's strictly forbidden to be ingested without the presence of a shaman or, you know, some sort of a controlled environment, okay? So it has very uh, much beautiful colors and shapes, that they come in the fly agaric or the muscaria mushroom or the amanita mushroom. As I said, it has so many names. Um, and I want to talk about why that I believe that Papa Smurf is the shaman. Okay, he is the shaman to the actual Smurfs because lots of the times we can see Papa Smurf preparing these mushrooms or Smurf berries, which is the only food or soup that the Smurfs seem to eat or drink, okay, except for Greedy Smurf. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about him later on. Um, but I want to talk about um, the blue mushroom, okay? The blue mushroom, like all of the Amanita mushrooms, are potent, but it's said to be the most poisonous fungus, okay? And as we know um, that, you know, the psychedelic abilities, the raising of the conscience of the, uh, you know, re the recipient of the mushroom, um, the qualities, it has the same qualities in LSD because LSD has, you know, um, is a fungi and it has these um, induced states or trips that it's said to take people on, okay? So some of the trips you can go on together and others you can go on individual trips, okay? So... This Amanita muscaria is everywhere in the Smurfs cartoon, okay? And we know that when we think of a mushroom, out of all the mushrooms, we think of the magic mushroom. It's very popular here in America. They use it as the general standard of an emoji. So if you was to go and put a, a mushroom emoji, you would get the magic mushroom, okay? And we know it because it's red and it has white a white speckled cap, okay? And this speckled cap is actually called the Liberty Cap. All right. So keep in mind that lots of people also claim to have met little blue people on their fly agaric trips. OK, so, you know, as I said, the Smurfs eat and they drink this particular mushroom like substance and they do call it Smurf berries. OK, and we would often see 
Papa Smurf prepare these Smurf berries in his alchemist lab. And we will take a look inside and discover that, um, you know, Papa Smurf was also a wizard, okay? So we have Gargamel, the human, who is the wizard. And then we also have Papa Smurf who is also a wizard, okay? So we would see him, you know, um, mixing magic potions and, you know, that sort of thing all the time in his lab. And if we take a look at Papa Smurf, he's depicted as wearing the clothing of the shaman, okay? So a Siberian shaman would use would usually be seen wearing the white flowy clothing, which Gargamel um, does wear oftentimes when he is presenting his Smurf berries to resemble some sort of a ritual, okay? So, um, you know, and he's often depicted as being clumsy and, you know, he gets really surprised at the outcomes of his own magical spells, okay? Now, his arch enemy or arch nemesis, Gargamel, um, and as we know, the meaning of nemesis means one who cannot defeat his enemy. So, you know, Gargamel can never seem to catch, or if he does catch, he can never seem to keep the Smurfs or Papa Smurfs when he does, um, you know, find success in chasing them down. So, um, as I said, um, Gargamel also is seen mixing liquid Con concoctions in his alchemist lab as well, okay? So, and one of Gargamel's most successful creations was Smurfette, okay? So Gargamel did create Smurfette to spy on the Smurfs and assist him in setting traps, okay? So, you know, Gargamel had these fits of rage and jealousy against the Smurfs and, um, you know, he created uh, Smurfette so that he could actually go ahead and catch the Smurfs, okay? So, um, you know, and as uh, Papa Smurf represented the shaman, I believe that Gargamel's clothes, um, the way he dressed in his priestly garb mimics the Catholic post, okay? So the highest priest in the Catholic post is the Black Pope, the superior general of popes, okay? Or a Jesuit, okay? Short for the Society of Jesus. And in Roman Catholic order of priests, this society was created in the 15th century, and they had three main objectives that they focused on, okay? So the Jesuits did create and, um, you know, throughout the world, not just here in America. They wanted to create highly disciplined schools. So we all know that Catholic schools are known for, you know, giving out spankings to their children and, you know, here in America. And I'm sure that they do the same thing elsewhere, okay, in other societies or other countries, I, I should say. So that's number one, create highly disciplined schools. Number two, they wanted to propagate Catholic beliefs through missionary work and combat the Protestants, okay? So they're highly known for being the militant arm of the palpacy or the Catholic Church, okay? So, um, you know, and, and also the Jesuits are widely known for being involved in politics and even controlling both political opponents' affairs, okay? So inside of the political realm, um, many fear the Jesuits, okay? And I think that they fear them because of the unknown, okay? You know, they've been known to infiltrate Catholic churches and churches that are not Catholic. And I think many just fear their operational secrecy. Like you kind of fear what you don't know about, you know what I mean? And just the fact that they can control the political realm and people just don't understand how the Jesuits were able to do this for such a long time. And in the Smurfs cartoon, Gargamel is actually depicted as one of these Jesuits, okay? He sends floods to the Smurfs. He doesn't want them to be free. He wants to hunt them down. He doesn't like the fact that they are living in this harmonious environment, okay? And there's a true story of Gargamel and a cat named Osriel dating back to the 12th century, okay? 
So there was a priest who became a part of the Dominican order, and I'll go through really quick his beginning story. So this priest was in charge of carrying out the Inquisition in ancient Rome. His name was Gargamel, and he was born in a small town in Spain and had come from a very poor family, and he was abandoned at the age of four by his mother. She sat him on a blanket in front of a convent entrance, and he was was found by the religious men and adopted inside of the church. And in time, you know, he became a priest himself. All the older priests who raised him had passed away. And finally, he ended up in this huge ruined church all by himself. And the sadness um, from him being alone had pretty much caused Gargamel to go insane. Okay. And he has found a small cat one evening, his birthday it was his birthday, and that evening of his birthday, he found a small cat that was wandering the church looking for food, and he was happy that he had this feline companion that he called Osriel, okay? And Osriel was a boy's name, little boy cat, right? So Osriel and him was inseparable. And as we know here in America, the meaning of Osriel um, is the angel of death here, okay, or the Grim Reaper. So the Smurfs Gargamel was always accompanied by Osriel, okay, and Osriel was always there with Gargamel as, you know, he walked with Gargamel and he pretty much accompanied the Smurfs on their way to death as well, okay, and he can be seen actually hunting the Smurfs for Gargamel, okay, and would help bring them back to Gargamel's alchemist lab, okay? So in this lab, they would have these traps prepared, so they would be ready to boil and eat these little blue creatures, okay? So Gargamel um, wanted to capture the essence of the Smurfs, okay? So let's just code out essence definition, okay? So essence is a concentration that's obtained from a particular plant or other matter used for flavoring or scent, okay? So, um, you know, Gargamel wanted the essence of the Smurfs, okay? And um, alchemists are also known for creating actual beans, as I talked about earlier with him creating uh, Smurfette. But the actual beans that the alchemists create are known as perforationism or homunculized or homunculus, okay? And it's a fully formed individual that's created from a germ or a fungi, okay? And I talked about that in my earlier videos as well. The alchemists create in these little humanoid, seven full metal um, people, if you will, little humanoids, and you create them with seven full metal alchemist ingredients, which is greed, sloth, wrath, envy, pride, and uh, a father or a mother-like ability, okay? So, you know, um, there's only three female homunculus that were ever created or transmutated from substances. Um, um, and these female humanoids would have been capable of more superhuman abilities, more strength than the actual male creations, okay? So um, it's not a far, far cry that Gargamel can actually create Smurf because uh, alchemists have been depicted creating humans since, uh, you know, or for thousands of years, I should say. Now, the first female that was created by a alchemist had one eye, okay? So she had one eye. She was uh, actually a cyclops in nature. The first female creation of the alchemist only had one eye, all right? But 
here in the Smurfs world, one of these um, fictional characters, Smurfette, we know that she had two eyes, okay? So she was literally created by Gargamel inside of his sorceress chambers, okay? And that's where Smurfette first came to life at, okay? And she was depicted with black hair and, you know, a larger nose region. And um, as I said, you know, she was his creation. He called her daughter. And she called him Papa, all right? So, but she really wanted to be a regular Smurf, okay? And so Papa Smurf, through a series of magical incantation of words and potions, turned Smurfette into a normal, quote-unquote, normal Smurf, okay? So, um, you know, and when she was, you know, the black hair Smurf, she was always uh, very depressed and sad. And she just felt inflicted that, you know, she would do really bad things to the Smurfs and really didn't want to lie and trap and trick them. OK, but she seemed to have no control over her evil deeds like one would have no control when they are under spells, when they are under, um, you know, possessions. You do not understand or know that you're being controlled from elsewhere, okay? So she had no control and she wanted nothing more than to be a real Smurf, okay? So um, let's see. In 1966, okay, Papa Smurf absolved Smurfette of her guilt, okay? And he basically welcomed her into the Smurf village, built a house, had the other Smurfs painted pink, okay? And, you know, at that time, she was actually still spying with Gargamel through the, the mural porter or, or the mural, the mirror portal okay but shortly after this the uh, spell um was put on her by papa smurf you know they saw big signs of of a transition through the turning blonde of her actual hair okay so her hair had turned blonde and that is the smurfette that we had come to know so he had undone gargamel sorcery on smurfette you know he created he, meaning Gargamel, created Smurfette with blue clay, sugar and spice, crocodile tears, a half a pack of lies, magpie, and a heart of stone. And Papa Smurf had undone all of those previous, um, you know, magical episodes that was put on Smurfette. Okay, so... Um, and I'll actually include the link. That was actually um, in the original work, and it was from 1958 through 1966 that Smurfette was, you know, depicted as having black hair and assisting with, um, you know, hunting down the Smurfs, okay? So... Um, now let us talk about the fact that, um, you know, I did talk about that a little bit, but let's talk about the fact that Gargamel would always want to, you know, send floods to the Smurfs. He would always want to, you know, um, just pretty much corrupt their environment. Okay. And the the Smurfs resided in this cooperative community, you know, and it was based on the principles of sharing, being kind, helpful towards one another's um, humanitarian projects. They would all pitch in. The way society operated before a monetary system was introduced, okay, and that's what we would see the um, classes of the Smurfs uh, be involved in, okay? So each Smurf appears to be given their necessities of life, okay, from shelter to clothes to food or their magical mushrooms or in the Smurfs language their Smurf berries okay now this principle is envisioned by Karl Marx okay communism not socialism okay see the communism works is supposed to be this global movement okay where they would be killing out the working class citizens throughout these capitalist world revolutions. This is what Karl Marx's agenda is all about, okay? And I don't want to get into that too deep, but I do feel that Karl Marx has a lot to do, or the creator of the Smurfs has 
been influenced by Karl Marx, as we see a lot of, he has had a lot of influences. But let me explain the main focal point of communism really quick in a nutshell, okay? And what it has to do with the Smurf, the Smurfs and what it has to do with us Americans, okay? So we have communism and we have capitalism, okay? So the opposite of communism or Marxism, okay, is capitalism. So on the right, we have a Republican side of the political sector that is capitalism. Now, capitalism is a system in which your land, your homes, your cars, your factories, etc. are owned privately in order to create profit for the owners, okay? So you purchase a home, you pay off your mortgage, you receive the deed, um, you know, or the title to your home and which you now own, okay? only needing to pay property taxes. Now you've acquired this asset from your hard work, your determination. Now, communism, okay, the opposite of that. To put it bluntly, um, you will own nothing, okay? You will own nothing and you will be happy about your status, okay? So everything will be owned and controlled by the government. That's what communism is in a nutshell. And Marxism was being introduced in the Smurf cartoons, okay? And Karl Marx, this German-born journalist, had dreamed of invading the ideas of leaders, of tomorrow, of America. And we actually see that happening in the 21st century today. It remains a really big tool for oppression, okay? And we have seen and felt this revolt being pushed on us by the left side, okay? So, I mean, it's a difference if, you know, America was to rise up and have this revolution on their own, but then it's another thing when you're being pushed towards a, another American revolution, okay? I mean, the justice and the education systems have been demonic to the core. The agendas are unfair. We see, you know, false witnesses in court, um, failure to recognize spiritual matters such as witchcraft, okay? So such as sorcery, such as voodoo, such as the very things that we see happening inside of the Smurfs cartoons. And it seems that if you're not a practitioner of these occult teachings, then you're the bad guy, all right? Or you're the bad girl, all right? It's like, you know, see you later. How dare you be here and want fairness, you know what I mean? In business areas or in school systems, all right? Or in your court affairs. How dare you want fairness? We're going to do what we want to do. And that's what, you know, uh, Marxism and communism is all about, okay? So, but back to the Smurfs and Papa Smurf, the leader of the Smurfs, okay? So um, these Smurfs would all gather around attentively and really hold on to every word that Papa Smurf spoke, okay? So let's talk about the effects of the Amanita mushroom and the effect that it has on most, okay? So when um, it's sleep, it's sleep. So sleep is the number one effect. So most people tend to lack awareness. They go into this really deep relaxation state, okay? And it almost depends on the individual. So depending on your perception as an individual, you will get individualized results, okay? Based off of your clarity of life, based off of your awareness, okay? And, um, um, you uh, you know, it's also been stated that on these mushroom induced trips that people would actually see little blue people that would actually communicate with them. OK, so let's talk about Astro Smurf. OK, and why I thought that this particular episode was very important because it was the first episode of the Smurfs. It was the first ever episode, okay? And it was presented on September 12th, 1981. So, you know, they had the Smurf cartoon, I mean, the Smurf inside of the comics and stuff like that, the papers, but the actual cartoon itself, all right, coming here to America, okay? It was introduced September 12th, 1981, this particular episode, okay? So, with some assistance 
from Handy Smurf, Afro Smurf wanted to fulfill his dream of taking a trip okay and to his very own rocket ship okay and astro smurf's name wasn't astro smurf his name was actually dreamy okay but you know astro means star or out of space celestial if you will okay and so he was successful at building this starship but the starship literally went nowhere okay this this arc or this aircraft um and you know what in another video we'll talk about how the word ark is actually, it means aircraft. It doesn't mean shit that goes in the water. That's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. But um, the unfortunate part about this is that Dreamy hadn't left his village at all. Papa Smurf had actually smurfed up a plan to make Dreamy's wish look as if it came true and he had decided to pretend that he and the other smurfs would show dreamy a parallel reality except all the smurfs were giving um you know um this uh, magical potion where they would turn they would turn green but they all would still be themselves so he would actually encounter people that were just like or encounter smurfs that were just like the smurfs that he remembered on earth but this was actually planet swoof okay so papa smurf was grandpa swoof okay and even the word swoof okay we can girl call that the word swoof it metaphorically explains a period of ignorance okay um a spiritual crisis and in a larger meaning it's referred to as failure or having a hard time okay so being on planet swoof with these swoofs so grandpa swoof okay um something went over everyone's head okay so these creators were swoofing us right and they're very they're very 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 creative these creators okay i mean we'll highlight the creator at the conclusion of this video but in any event as dreamy uh, Smurf slept, they actually had him arrive back on planet Earth with the rest of the actual Smurfs, okay? So now let's talk about the hats that the Smurfs are seen wearing, okay? The Phrygian caps. This style hat is extremely old. Its origins can be dated back before Christ, okay? The Phrygian was a kingdom of Anatolia, which is now modern day Turkey. Okay, this place was famous for their embroidery, their carpets, their woodwork, their metal, but nothing was more infamous than their Phrygian caps. And the Smurfs are seen wearing these Liberty caps, hence the name of the magical mushroom, Liberty cap as well, okay? And it signifies freedom and the pursuit of liberty. And the original cap was worn by emancipated slaves of ancient Rome, which was a tribute to Libertas. And she was a Roman goddess. And, uh, and they looked at her as a personification of liberty. Okay, And she became a politicized figure in the late Republic. So these Phrygian caps are the official mascots of Paris, all right? And at the Burning Man conference in D.C. in 2017, these were worn all over the place. And since antiquity, colonists wore these caps and even constructed poles that they called liberty poles and hung the hats from them in an act of defiance against the British Empire. Okay, the, the British Empire had these unethical taxation without representation and, you know, people were very, very vocal about their, um, you know, defiance, okay? Um, and uh, also we can see the Phrygian caps being represented on our silver dollar, our half a dollar, okay? Lady Liberty does wear one of these hats, okay? And this is what the United States Army was first developed to do, was to protect and def defend our freedom against these British invaders, okay?
And Boston was at the forefront of the kickback with the Sons of Liberty. So we had Samuel Adams, John Hancock, Paul Revere, and Joseph Warren, okay? And there were 113 more men, and they disguised themselves as Mohawk Indians, boarded ships, and quietly spilt 45 tons of tea into the Boston Harbor to agitate the taxation system, okay? And that's where the term Boston Tea Party had come from, all right? And um, it's been long... Um, ignored and you know the fact that we're feeling this burden of of taxes you know we have these careless presidents giving away our wealth to foreign countries we have you know them giving away our wealth to foreign people while we clean it up or pay off the debts this is what we're seeing today okay and um, by the way we have a float in history museum in Boston it's an exhibit where um, they have live reenactments where and they also have a tea room too but they play out the actual events of the spilling of the tea into the harbor, okay? And I believe that the Smurfs were shown to wear this Phrygian hat to say, listen, give me liberty or give me death. We want to be free, okay? And that's what I believe this was about. Remember, defending freedom comes at a very high price. Defending freedom, the stakes are really high. We have evildoers that want to take over the world. All around the world, you have the pinky in the brain. They don't want to take over a city or a country or a small corner in a community. They want to take over the world. All around the world, we have a Gargamel and an Osriel. All over the world, we have a Mr. Claw. Used to be a cartoon called Inspector Gadget, where this guy, Mr. Claw, wanted to take over the world. So there's always someone who wants to demote freedom. And we're starting to see here lately that our freedom needs to be defended. People need to be able to rise, have a voice, and say, no, we don't want to be your slaves, or we refuse to be your slaves any longer, all right? So remember, defending freedom is very costly, you know, and I want to talk about a few things before we end this video, and that is the deadly sins. Let's talk about the deadly sins that are seen invading the Smurfs cartoon. The first one that I want to discuss is pride, okay? The Bible says, let not the mighty man boast of his might, but let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me. All right, humility cures pride. By removing your ego and your boastfulness, therefore you're allowing an attitude of service. So if you look in Corinthians 13, 4, verse 13, chapter 4, if you look in Romans verse 12, I'm sorry, yeah, verse 12, chapter 16, you'll see that they discuss vanity in detail, okay? The next one I want to discuss is lust, okay? Lust, that's the second deadly sin that I want to speak about. That's when you have a strong passion or a longing, especially for sexual desires. And the Bible speaks of lust in Timothy, okay? Verse 2, chapter 22, it says, Flee from youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, and love. So we have to learn self-control, and self-control cures lust. So if you can control your passion and leverage your energy and try to understand if you're dealing with any sort of reciprocated love. Is any sort of reciprocated love present? We're looking at Hefty Smurf because Hefty's the only one who would chase Smurfette, okay, around like effortlessly. Now, the third one I want to talk about is gluttony, okay? Gluttony. We have a Smurf called Greedy Smurf, and he's a glutton, and that's an excessive ongoing of eating or of food and drinks, okay? Now, in Corinthians verse 10, chapter 31, it says, therefore, whether you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. Temperance cures gluttony, 
okay by implanting your desires to be healthy therefore we can make ourselves fit to serve the lord and others okay so we don't want to be like greedy smurf and it's the only thing that we can think of is eating food or offering people food all the time i mean it is a good thing to be a nice host or a hostess but the reality is that you don't always want to be uh, you know, seen as someone who is always eating or how about the person who always feels like they need to eat? I need to eat. I got to eat. You know how I get when I don't eat like they'll shut the world down. And I mean, I know that you can get a hunger headache, but every now and again, we encounter people who do this all the time. That's gluttony. OK, we want to avoid that. The fourth sin I want to talk about is wrath. OK, so this is a strong anger and hate towards another person or their situational stance. OK, so in Romans verse 12, chapter 19, the Bible says, behold, beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine and I will repay, says the Lord. OK, so we have a smurf who is always walking around saying, I hate this and I hate that. And if he doesn't hate something, he'll say, I like this or I love this, but I don't want anyone to know that I don't hate it. Okay, so be careful with that family. All right, so the fifth sin we can talk about is sloth, okay, sloth. We have a smurf named Lazy Smurf who has excessive laziness as a personality trait, all right? And being a sloth is when you have a failure to act and utilize your talents, okay? And you place the interests of others in the world above a life of ease and over relaxation. So in Proverbs verse 6, chapter 6, it says, go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. That's saying that the ants work really hard, watch them and then be encouraged and then you work hard as well. So we can find verses that correlate with this in Theologians 3.10, Colossians 3.23, Proverbs 24.33. So basically diligence and zeal cure slothfulness all right family so find what you enjoy partaking in and give a healthy amount of yourself unto it okay that's what we need to learn to do we need to learn how to not overindulge in these sins that we just took a look at that the smurfs um have displayed to us okay and so you know, let's just talk about the creator before we end. The creator, Pierre Cullifield, or Culliford, I should say. I'm sorry, it's Culliford, C-U-L-L-I-F-O-R-D. His pen name was Peo, and he was born in Brussels, Belgium. Okay, he developed the Smurfs comic book strip series, as well as Johan and Peewit. OK, his wife's name was Janine Culliford and she colored Peo's illustrations all the way up until he passed away. OK, and she's the brains behind coming up with the idea to color the Smurfs blue, actually. OK, so she was working at Studio Peo and she had to be, you know, some sort of an insider family to know how to illustrate those satanic symbols that are seen in the series, you know, the different garb, you know, the wardrobes of the characters, the red shoes, the Jesuit flow, the whole Siberian shamanism, all right? And so where did the inspiration come from? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Where did they get the inspiration to come up with these things? They have two children named... Tahiri and Veronica Culliford, who actually continue to work on their father's legacy as we speak, okay? And the Smurfs Lost Village that was created in 2017 was dedicated to Miss Nine. That was her her nickname, Nine Culliford, okay? So, but we don't understand still where these symbols come from. Was it the Phrygian goddess, okay? There's a Phrygian goddess, um, I don't know. 
is it the little gnome people those little humanoids all right and they have alchemist roots and they've been developed with clay you know if you look into the history of gnome people um i don't understand does the innovation come from the american the american french revolution i really don't know does it come from some sort of marxist communist utopia that you know they're trying to see and then destroy let me know your thoughts below make sure you subscribe make sure you